talk with Julia Cosby at International News Channel and Take TV is on Ontario's ongoing corona pandemic situation and as well as on what Ontario's budget has to share to combat this pandemic. I'm joined here with Fazal Hassan. He is the NDP MPP from South York Weston. Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Julia, for having me. So uh, today we're going to discuss the budget. We're going to discuss uh, COVID-19. Uh, there's lots of things to talk about. So just to uh, start off, how concerned are you about the second wave of the ongoing pandemic in your riding as well as Ontario? Well, I'm concerned about and every Ontarian should be concerned about and uh, the official opposition have been um, uh, raising the alarm with regards to the um, the pandemic, uh, the first wave, the second wave, and now the failure of not able to tackle it. We are concerned about it and we're concerned the safety of everyone. Uh, uh, and also we needed also uh, to make sure that uh, the community safety is number one. You recently asked uh, Doug Ford, Premier Doug Ford, why uh, South York and Weston continues to be neglected by the government's COVID-19 response. You urge Ford to address the community's shortage of pharmacies and vaccine access. What has been done by Premier Ford so far? Very good. Thank you very much, for Julia. Uh, York South Weston has been neglected not only the last three years, but the last 15 years. So I will say it's from bad to worse. And this was continued this neglect, as you know, uh, when the pandemic was declared on March 13. It took us until September 28 to have a permanent testing uh, 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 facility. And now, to this day, we don't have a permanent vaccine facility in, in a riding that has been termed as hot sports and also as high risk community. And, um, and where do our people go? to get their first scenes, mm -hmm. far away communities, and it's it's a mess, it's a chaos, and it's a confusion. And I've I also, with regard to the pharmacy portion, we only have eight, even though other communities had so much of them. And when they were also, those folks tried to book them, they were not even available any supplies. So this is a, a, a failure from not only this government, but also past governments, uh, especially the last 15 years that have neglected this community. And we are coming, uh, uh, Julia, as kind of an afterthought, you know, uh, that our community is not included the programs and services that this government is delivering out when it comes to the pandemic. We also have a large essential workers, frontline workers, who has to go and do the essential things that we need to move things in this province. And, and they don't have basic days. And when they get ill or when they're sick, they can't stay home. They have to go out, they have to pay their rent, they have to you know, think about their food and so on. And, and, and this is essential to make sure that people like that, BSWs, frontline workers, to get basic days. And also to raise the BSWs uh, uh, um, um, wage as well so that we encourage them to have uh, a good paying wages as well. So to this day, uh, uh, Julia, we don't have a permanent uh, uh, um, uh, uh, facility in our community. Mm -hmm. I have also written to the Minister of Health uh, in a couple of uh, occasions. We have also given them suggestions of places where it could be used and, and, and just start quickly to uh, uh, give folks uh, their vaccines uh, or their shots. Uh, and, and imagine a community neglected like that, where we are also being termed as hotspots and high risk community. I know that the current government, they claim that the 2021 Ontario budget supports the province's comprehensive vaccine distribution plan, along with providing additional resources for health and care sector and their initiatives to protect the economic well-being of families, uh, workers and employees. Uh, do you see it that way? Well, I mean, look at it. I mean, this is we are in the middle of a pandemic. I've talked about the essential workers, the frontline workers. They, this budget doesn't include a paid sick days. They don't have, if they don't have the, the uh, if they are sick, they can't stay home. And this is how workplaces now are going to be spread. If people are sick, one person is sick or feeling not well, they are forced to go to work. And now we've seen many outbreaks in workplaces, but the right thing to do 
is to provide paid sick days for for every worker in Ontario. And it has been estimated 60% of workers don't have paid sick days. And this budget, again, it, it is a budget of cuts. It doesn't have uh, paid sick days. It doesn't have raising uh, the PSW wages. It doesn't have uh, money for uh, childcare, uh, for youth, for housing. You name it, the, the important issues uh, that that could help uh, folks uh, is not helping. Even in small businesses, uh, you know, there are restrictions. Uh, uh, not every small business is, is included in also the Ontario uh, small business grants, especially taxi drivers. They're very important uh, uh, small businesses, and they are part of the community, working hard day in and day out. They're part of the hospitality. Now they have, they said they're going to increase it, to expand it, but they're not including them in this budget, those folks who are doing a fantastic job in our community, moving folks, uh, even they have been asked to take people into hospitals, as you, we've heard some of the taxi drivers who are uh, organizations that have raised concern about that as well, for their safety. Now, your riding of York South and Weston, it's full of uh, low income and racialized frontline workers. Um, it's been declared a hot spot um, early in the pandemic. How is the situation going in, during the current wave? Well, I think what we have been, uh, you know, in this uh, pandemic uh, doesn't affect uh, the same every community. There are communities uh, that are affected more than the others because we have more frontline workers. We have folks who have to take the bus to go to work. They cannot uh, uh, isolate themselves because they don't have their own cars and so forth. And that's why it's important. Community uh, like ours need extra help and extra support to make sure people are supported. In this budget and in this government continues the neglect we had the last 15 years before from bad to worse. We need, if we've been termed, as um, a hot sports and high risk community, then we need those supports. We need a per permanent vaccine facility. We need also more pop-ups. And as you know, that uh, we couldn't even wait for the government. What we did, my office uh, teamed up uh, with Humber River Hospital to, to start organizing and registering uh, and distributing vaccines to communities, to senior buildings, to faith. Uh, uh, centers to also to Toronto community housing corporations to make sure that we don't wait for the government but uh, work with others to get the job done and we have done that but we also want more help uh, the government to provide us more vaccines uh, and also more pop-ups uh, and more locations where people could go and get their vaccines. You recently said that your riding is a pharmacy desert when it comes to vaccine access. You have only eight pharmacies that offer vaccines in what is a very large riding full of essential workers and that you don't even have a permanent facility to vaccinate seniors. And those eight pharmacies don't have adequate vaccine supply. Did you get any share from the 2021 Ontario budget to improve your situation in your riding? Well, I mean, that's a very good question. I think the word desert uh, uh, was, was, was a term used by the Toronto Star. And uh, I've also given the credit to that. Um, uh, but I think um, what right now uh, the government is not providing those essential support now is needed. We don't have, as I indicated again, uh, Julia, uh, 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 locations where people could go and get their first scenes. And this is, again, another neglect. We need support. We need resources. We need more uh, 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 vaccines coming to York Southwestern. So that if we are being termed high risk and, and hot spots, then the government should be working uh, members of our community and, and providing that. And the first thing to do is to start with having a permanent vaccine location and, and also provide more vaccines like other, uh, other hospitals, such as the Humber River Hospital, who have been very uh, keen and helpful uh, working with us uh, to come to our community and help, uh, uh, you know, team up my team here uh, and also register and also organize and distribute. That is also uh, something we encourage, but they don't have vaccines to continue that aspect as well. So we need uh, to continue that uh, cooperation uh, and, 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 and working together collaboratively, but also we need uh, uh, the government to provide us more locations 
where members of our community, the seniors, even now they've announced him, folks from the age uh, uh, 18 and above. But uh, Julia, the problem with that is there isn't any plan. They just announce without a plan and there's no uh, a place where people can be can actually uh, go to to get their vaccines in areas that they said a hot spot is the priority and high risk communities like ours. But they have no plan. Nothing is going on. No locations to go to. And this is also creating more chaos and confusion. Yes, you are using uh, some strong criticism. I have a quote from you here, and uh, that quote says, the lack of pharmacy locations and lack of a permanent facility to distribute the vaccines is not only bad public health policy, but amounts to discrimination among racialized and economic lines. Our high-risk, hard-working communities deserve pandemic protection. When will the Ford government create an equitable and vaccine response? Uh, unquote. Uh, there's so many questions about your statement, uh, bad public uh, health policy, discrimination along racialized and economic lines. Um, when do you think that the four government will create an equitable uh, vaccine response? And um, have you received any any answers or anything um, to your liking? Well, I mean, the, Julia, the key here is that we want them to address that. And this is also, as I mentioned, uh, on the COVID uh, testing facilities. It took us six months and a half to have a permanent a testing facility. And this is also repeated again to now, where, you know, distributions of vaccines are distributed uh, in many places. And I think it's, it's okay. Everybody should be getting the vaccines, but I think we should start where we have termed as hotspots and high risk uh, communities like ours. So far, there is none. The only things we've got in our community is uh, us teaming up with Humber River Hospital trying to help them organize and register and deliver with them on those vaccines in, in senior buildings, faith centers, and TCC uh, 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 buildings. And this was also our initiative, reaching out to Humber River Hospital and working with them. We thank uh, the CEO, uh, Bob Collins, and the, the, the mobile pop-up team uh, leader, uh, Robin, uh, uh, Ruben Rodriguez, who have been very helpful. That's all we have at the moment, and they don't even have our vaccines to continue at the moment. What we are asking again is these kinds of neglect and lack of, of, of equity and, and an equal distribution of vaccines to come to an end and now act now to uh, help places where it's identified uh, uh, as hotspots and high risk to get uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 people um, uh, vaccines quickly. So that way we, we put people's health uh, 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 front and center and make sure that everybody in this community is safe. Now, I know that your party leader, Andrea Horvath, has said that the federal government's doing a very poor job. She has no doubt, but the Ford government has not been doing as good of a job either. Um, I had, do have a quote from her which says, the messed up distribution system here in Ontario sits at the feet of Doug Ford and his government, unquote. Uh, why would you, would you add it in? Well, absolutely. I mean, I think my leader have been uh, 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 speaking about this, these inequities and the lack of vision for this current government and also the failure that they are letting us down again and again. And I think, yes, because the premier has a responsibility to clearly negotiate clearly the federal government to ask them exactly what numbers of vaccines do we need. And that tells us also the failure of lack of vision and leadership that where we are at the moment. And that's exactly where it, 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 it uh, uh, um, uh, uh, letting us down uh, by the leadership of these uh, uh, Ford Conservatives here at the Queen's Park. Thank you so much, uh, MPP Hassan, for joining me today all the way from York Southwestern. I really appreciate your time here. Thank you for your time, uh, Julia. And uh, uh, next time, hopefully, when we come out of the um, the pandemic, sir, basically, basically, I'll be able to come to join you live there. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm joined with Nina Tangri, Conservative Member of Provincial Parliament for Mississauga Streetsville. I'm here with Nina Tangri. She is the Conservative Member of Provincial Parliament for Mississauga Streetsville. Hello. Welcome, Nina. 
Um, Thank you very much, Julia. Nice to see you. Very, very nice to see you. Uh, so we're going to just dip into this. We're going to talk about the pandemic. We're going to talk about the new budget. Uh, my first question to you is, uh, what's the situation with the third wave of the pandemic in your riding and how are you dealing with it? So uh, as we all know, um, during the third wave, we've, it's really um, almost a fire out of control. It's mm -hmm. extremely devastating to so many people and so many families. Uh, what we're seeing right now, my riding uh, consists of L5M, L5N and L5W, all of which are part of the hot zone. So uh, what we're seeing is a lot of people within my riding who are essential workers that are going to work, taking transit. And it's just, um, you know, we just want to make sure that we can find a way, one, to get as many people as possibly vaccinated, and two, that people, you know, follow all of the protocols to stay safe and physically distance, continue to wear their masks. And we know that in some circumstances uh, at the workplace, that it is difficult. Uh, we've worked with many companies uh, in my riding and around uh, to try and find ways where they can help people with plexiglass and other ways to, to try and keep them apart from each other so they're not too close. Um, but it, it's still it's still um, a huge issue. So we're trying to get as many of these vaccination pop-up clinics running as we can. So that is our next target. Your government claims that the 2021 uh, budget is the next phase in Ontario's response to COVID-19. How so? So um, it's it's gonna. So we had uh, previously we wanted to make sure that we were keeping people stable as possible. But now it's recovery. Uh, so I. Uh, so the issue right now is to make sure that we can continue to try and find ways to make sure that we can recover once we come out of this pandemic. Now, we're not sure, of course, right now where, when the end of the pandemic will be, but we can't stop working. We can't stop making sure that we, you know, we take care of our businesses, that we make sure that we continue to support uh, our local small businesses and large. And uh, of course, a lot with a lot of that comes the jobs too. So. Uh, that's what we're really focusing on right now. So within the budget, it's focusing on how we come out of this and how we can find better ways to make sure that we can move forward and our economy can increase. Well, Ontario's health minister uh, had a statement where she said health, uh, you can't have a healthy economy without healthy people. But the pandemic is creating a havoc on people and the economy's uh, health both. Um, this could be depression, which leads to suicide, different mental illnesses. Um, but how would your government handle both challenges, health and economy? And that's it. That's what we've been working throughout is that balance. So how do we try and keep essential businesses of course have need to stay open because we need food uh we need to make sure that we have supplies of everyday supplies that you know keep us going but at the same time everybody that sort of stay at home some people have been out uh, you not been in the workplace uh since march of last year so you know if you're living alone and you're in a in a small home or a small condominium or if you have a large family in a small place or you know even if you're you know, for anyone to be at home, uh, not going out, not meeting with the people that they normally meet with, whether it's at work or elsewhere, it's been very trying on our mental health. And, you know, I'm seeing it all around. I see it and I have a lot of family that, uh, you know, in Australia, in the UK and in India, and we're, I'm watching how different countries are dealing with the pandemic. It's been devastating for everyone globally. So we're trying to find ways, our government is saying, how can we support people by making sure that they understand that there's somewhere to turn. So if you do feel alone, you do feel um, depressed, you feel stressed, there's always, it, we're all just a phone call away. So, you know, don't hesitate. Uh, don't feel like you are alone. Uh, there's a lot of people there to help you. So that's what we have to make sure that we do. But at the same time, like I said, with our um, businesses, especially our small local businesses, they've been hurt really bad. And we know restaurants have had a, a huge hit. Our banquet halls, the people that were supposed to get married last year and so far this year have had to either postpone or had a much smaller wedding that they had planned on. Um, but one of the biggest people that it's really hurt are our small personal care workers. So uh, personal care workers as in salons and, you know, nail salons and hairdressers, they've really taken the brunt of this because they haven't been, op been, been open, especially in Peel region in Toronto. Uh, they've been closed for a very long time and they only had that small window where they were open uh, prior to closing down before Christmas. 
Uh, now the opposition has been making uh, statements that they're not satisfied with the government's vaccine plan. Uh, NDP leader Andrea Horvath uh, said that she is no doubt that the federal government has done a poor job in procuring vaccines, but that doesn't let the four government off the hook. Um, so uh, her quote is, the messed up distribution system here in Ontario sits at the feet of Doug Ford and his government. Uh, how would you defend this criticism? Look, uh, she's the leader of the official opposition. Her job is to hold the government to account. Uh, however, you know, when we, we look at how the vaccine distribution has taken place, uh, we have a health table. Uh, we have our chief medical officer of health who works uh, with all of our other local regional medical officers of health and between all of them and our government together is deciding the distribution. Now, when we receive our distribution from the federal government, when the vaccines eventually do come, um, so we initially we were looking at a uh, population base of over 80. So they were the they were the the, uh, the the constituents that we really wanted to get vaccinated because the biggest impact of COVID at that time uh, were those either that were seniors or in long-term care homes, as we know. Um, you know, we had so many you know people die. So we wanted to make sure we got those people and the staff at those locations, our healthcare workers who are on the front lines every day. Uh, we wanted to make sure that all of those people within that group were first vaccinated. So I, I don't think anyone disagrees with that. I think that was absolute priority one. And, and as we started bringing down the age groups, which we have, um, now we're at the 50 plus in most places. Some locations have 45 plus. And now in our hot zone here in Peel and Toronto and some other areas, uh, where we really have a significant number of COVID, uh, COVID cases, uh, we're trying to, to put together, we have them in the pharmacies, we have many pharmacies within Peel that are already up and running, um, but they are for the most part the 50 plus or 55 plus because it's the AstraZeneca. But uh, for the pop-up clinics that we're bringing, we're trying to have and getting to the workplaces. I think ideally for that one, it's going to be the Moderna vaccine. Um, the unfortunate thing, of course, with the Moderna vaccine now is that we've just received another delay. Uh, so that is our biggest issue. We have everything ready to go to get the vaccine in people's arms, but we have to have the vaccines. And if we don't have those vaccines, that is our, that's our biggest problem right now. We have people very, very eager to get their vaccines. We heard about Peterborough where there was a young student who um, chose not to go to a party. However, others in the house the, where he lived did go and they brought it home and he died. That, you know, and I just heard from a constituent today asking because her son's coming home from university and he's living here in a hot zone going back to, uh, uh, back to his uh, university and she's quite concerned about him going back and, you know, she wants to get him vaccinated in between. He is part of that 18 plus group, so he's qualified, but we just don't have the vaccines available for him. Um, but it, it's 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 critical right now. We really have to make sure that we get those vaccines here. Um, I know the cabinet is meeting today uh, to look at other decisions they perhaps could be taking to try and curb more spread. That is the biggest uh, problem we're facing right now. We have to find ways. We have to ask the public, and I'm pleading to the public right now, please, please wear a mask, physically distance, sanitize, stay home if you can, only leave home for either work or essential items. Um, there's no need to be out, um, you know, walking around. I'm not talking about regular walking exercise absolutely we need to get fresh air and exercise but you know getting together with friends and family please don't do that right now let's just get this over with the sooner we can get over with this pandemic we can start getting together and socializing once again how does this 2021 budget help your riding and your city in the face of this pandemic so the budget uh, as i said it works on recovery i have a significant number of large medium size and small businesses. So, you know, like most writings and uh, the way we see it is this is a way for us to assist many of those coming out of the pandemic to start rebuilding again. As you know, we added, uh, we doubled the amount that uh, people were getting under the Ontario benefit for, for businesses. So if uh, it was between 10 and 20,000 for those who received 
uh, previously, they're automatically going to get a double up. So they don't have to reapply. Uh, they're aut automatically going to get a double up of that. So, you know, like I was talking about the salons, hairdressers, restaurants that had to close for a period. So now they will be able to get that extra benefit. And I think that was critical for many of them just to stay afloat. So, you know, they've They've suffered very, very much. And now another change that we've made with this stay-at-home order uh, in the past where we, for example, Walmart and Costco were open, but they were open to sell all products that they, they had. Uh, because they sold groceries, they were able to stay open. And a lot of our small businesses were suffering because of that. So they, they felt that it was, you know, if people are going to Costco to buy jeans, for example, but they're not allowed to open to sell their jeans in their small store. So this time with the stay at home order, we've asked Costco, Walmart and all the other stores, uh, grocery stores that sell other products that are not essential that they need to cordon those off. So people are not going to shop for those items. They're going to buy essentials only. So I think that uh, that was very much welcomed by our small business community. Um, and, and we understand that uh, people may need some of those things. So please just go online and purchase them that way. You can still do curbside pickup uh, from all of those stores. So you're, you're still able to purchase items that you need. Um, but the essential items only uh, is where you can go in and, uh, you know, make those purchases right now. Is your government satisfied with the federal government's plan and supply for the pandemic, for the vaccine? So right now, I mean, it, it, it can't be a who's made mistakes and what's happened. Right now, we have to work with our federal government uh, and our public health units together to, to find the best way to get people vaccinated. We know there's not enough supply. Uh, I know many vaccines, uh, you know, 100, over 100 million vaccines, I think, have been procured. Um, by the various companies, whether it be AstraZeneca, Pfizer or Moderna. Um, Johnson & Johnson was approved. Uh, we have not received any as of yet. We were, I think, supposed to receive them by the end of the month, but there have now been other concerns about that vaccine. So that, I believe, is on hold at this moment. Um, so, you know, it, it seems that the receiving the vaccines has been extremely slow. Um, over the past few weeks, however, with Pfizer, I know we've had a fairly steady in, uh, incoming amount of Pfizer. Moderna, like I said earlier, we've had many delays. Uh, AstraZeneca has been quite difficult to come by. We had our first shipment come from the Serum Institute in India, and this last shipment just came from the United States. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to procure a lot more and have more coming in in a more stable environment. I had my vaccine for the uh, last Friday and I had it at the University of Toronto, Mississauga. So that's part of the Trillium Health Partners. And I have to say it was extremely well run. Um, booking online um, was very simple. When I got there, just moving through the different steps was very seamless. It, was, it worked very well. Uh, I have to commend all of the people that uh, are taking part in that and putting it together. And I've heard from many of my constituents uh, of how well it is run. So if you do qualify to get vaccinated, I ask everybody, please go online or call 1-888-999-6488 where you can make that appointment. Uh, it's really tremendous seeing the people going to get vaccinated. That is our way out of this. I think right now uh, we need to curb the spread and the only way we can curb the spread is to get as many people vaccinated as possible. How is your government helping small businesses in the face of this stay at home order? So once again, like I said earlier, we, you know, we had the 10 to $20,000 benefit um, for people to help them, uh, you know, pay and they can use it any way they wish. So very different to, to the federal government's program as it was initially brought out. So we said, you can have this money and use it where you best see. So whether it's to pay suppliers, whether it's to pay your rent or heat and hydro, whatever it may be, you can utilize that those funds as, as you see fit because you're the business owner, you know uh, what is best for your business. So that is the, the, the main thing that we did as far as helping small businesses. And like I said, you don't have to go back online and reapply. Uh, it will be automatically, it will be deposited into your account directly. So that is uh, that was a huge plus. And we, we spoke, and I'm part of the Mississauga Board of Trade. I've done many meetings uh, with, the, with them and our local streets full business improvement association as well as just you know talking to many business people and we asked them you know what is it that would help you 
uh, best uh, throughout this pandemic. And they said, we need funds, but we can't have ties to it. We need to make sure that we can use it how we see best. So I think that's what they were really looking for. And that's what we did. Well, thank you so much, Nina Tangri, for joining me today. Uh, that's all for our show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Julie. I just want to take this opportunity to wish everyone celebrating right now. Uh, we just came through Basaki, and I also want to wish everyone a very happy Ramadan. And uh, please stay safe, stay with your family at home if possible. Please don't go out. And uh, I look forward to hopefully getting together with many of you in person very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. You were watching News Talk with Julia Cosby at the International News Channel of Tag TV today. Thank you.